Hi, I'm Brad. I think. Ever since I got back from CES 2022 and did my recap stream of everything I've seen there, it's been kind of a quiet couple of weeks. And during these quiet periods, I sort of have trouble figuring out what I want to make content on next. So if you have any ideas of any technologies related to VR or anything else you would like to see from me, let me know in the comments. This channel is normally about stuff coming out in the future of VR and like emerging tech related to it. And I think to look at the future, we kind of have to look at the past sometimes. A month or two ago, I did a really well-researched video talking about, well, the Vader project from Valve. After the HTC Vive, Valve basically wanted to put a lot of resources into making next generation headsets after the Vive and well, that headset was eventually canceled, but a lot of the technologies inside of it would eventually become the Index. And I've been doing a lot of stuff on Deckard, which is Valve's next really VR-related hardware project. And the interesting thing about Deckard is it seems to be taking a lot of the ideas that they were wanting to put into Vader and actually marketing it. I'm still very confident in that video I made, but I really wanted to add one more resource by looking at an old interview that was recorded at, by Tyler McVicker in 2017 of February. It was a very long interview talking about Valve's plans for VR, and really the whole interview was great, so I'm going to put the link in the description if you want to watch the whole interview, but this is a small snippet talking about the future technologies that Gabe Newell and some of the other VR employees at the time were really looking into. Of course, some of those technologies I believe were referring to stuff such as OLED micro displays, OpenXR, which they were even looking into with Chronos Group back then to have a more standardized software API, and stuff such as SOCs that do stuff such as wireless. So yeah, enjoy this little snippet from that interview and I'm gonna have little things in the corner to explain what I think that each thing they're really talking about. Because again, they thought that stuff was gonna come out sooner than it kinda unfortunately did. Enjoy. On the, on the hardware side, there are a bunch of obvious things. The, the sort of technology pipeline is, is pretty clear. You know, uh, headsets are going to get lighter. They're going to get smaller. The the resolution will go up. Resolution uh, is going to go up. Field of view is going to improve. Like th these aren't sort of speculative things. It's like these are all the the, the the pieces that are already, you know, are are basically finished in terms of everybody in the headset industry knows how to do them. It's just a question of you know getting getting their products out. One aspect of it that's a uh, that's a little less obvious. That's that you guys are going to start to hear about, and you should sort of keep your your uh, ears open to it, is that the current headsets essentially are piggybacking off of phone design, uh, phone panels, right? And it's kind of random luck that phone panels happen to accidentally give us displays that would work with headsets. Uh, and so what we're starting to see is that if people, as people start to say, oh, we're actually going to go and think about what are display technologies that rather than, you know, can we bastardize phones and phone technologies and use it, it actually turns out that there are a bunch of advantages that HMDs will have uh, that phones don't have. That once you can say you're building something just for a VR headset, you actually can uh, go much faster than the phones go. So we're actually going to go from this weird position where VR right now is kind of low res to being in a place where VR is actually higher res than just about anything else with much higher refresh rates than you're going to see on either desktops or phones. And that's something uh, that is a result of once the panel technology guys suddenly said, oh, well, wow, there are a lot of advantages to working within the, f the framework of a headset. So you'll actually s see the VR industry sort of leapfrogging pretty much any other display technology to, in terms of those characteristics. It's probably not obvious you know, from the first generation of products, but you'll you'll start to see that happening like in 2018 and 2019. And so eventually you'll reach the point where, you know, uh, you know, you'll be talking about incredibly high resolutions running at, you know, 200 hertz. And that's, that's something that's not obvious uh, right now from what's happening. Do you want to elaborate on that at all? Uh, just that we, um, a couple of years ago, it was like pulling teeth to get cell phone panel manufacturers to pay attention and to try to get panels that would fit, you know, the, the panel for this doesn't exactly fit in the headset, um, but to get them cut down. And now lots of companies are, there are, you know, coming forward with different things they want to do with panels and, and they all have different trade-offs and they're all better than the first generation panels. So it's, it's really uh, exciting to see the, the 
uh, component industry come forward. Lot, lots of people are working on lots of different things with VR, right. and it's all going to go into products in the next couple of years. And all of them are pretty excited in the PC space, especially that there's this huge pile of content that if they wire into the open standards correctly, instead of having to kickstart a hardware business and the software business, <laughs> there's the software business, there's plenty of software to run, and they can ship a piece of hardware that immediately takes advantage of it, which is just not, it's unusual for, for them to have that ability. So they're pretty pretty excited and they come talk to us all the time and because they know where our business is. We're, we're making content, and, but they come and talk with us about hardware and the deep R&D that we do uh, in hardware because uh, we share, we wireless share a lot is, of it. And last, just because I had a note, wireless is another sort of solved problem at this point. Uh, it's more a question of, so my, Expectation is that it'll be an add-on in 2017, and then it'll be an integrated feature in 2018. 